So a couple years ago, when I first started playing around with the script capabilities within Cyril, I put together a script that reduced your stars in your image for you. It worked, but it never was the way that I really wanted it to be because the scripting engine in Cyril is more or less just a list of commands. There's no logic that I can use to build into anything that I write. So like I said, it worked, but you guys would have to modify the script to make changes to the values. It's, it's cumbersome, let's say that. So now with this new version, they've incorporated Python, which means you can write a Python script to do just about anything that you want and interact with Cyril. So that's what I've done is I've taken that old star reduction script and I ported it over into Python. Now I gotta tell you guys, I'm just learning Python myself. This is my very first Python script. So I've had friends look at it and test it and break it for me. So when it's released, hopefully nobody has any issues with it. As well as a couple of the devs have taken a look at it at Cyril too. So let's get to it. I'll show you how it works and how you can download it. My name is Rich and you're watching Deep Space Astro. All right, so time of recording, I am running the development version, but what I'm showing you guys today is going to work identically on the officially released 1.4 version. I just wanted to put this video together to have it ready for when the official release came out. And obviously, if you're watching this, it's been released. So let's jump right into it. The first thing you need to do is download and install the star reduction script. So it's a lot easier, obviously, in 1.4 now. We're just going to come over into the menu and then we're going to click on scripts. Down the bottom here, this list are all the scripts that currently exist in Cyril's repository. You want to look for DSA star reduction .py, which is the Python script, and just put a tick mark next to it. Click apply. And then just a quick check if you come up into scripts and then Python scripts, you can see the star reduction script right there. I want to go over a few things. There are some checks when the script runs to make sure that there's some things that are in place and to give you reminders for other things. The first thing it checks for is the installation and configuration of the command line version of Starnet star removal. Starnet is a requirement for the script to run. If you don't know how to install it, I'll leave a link up in the top right corner that shows you how to do that from a previous video that I put out. But that is the first check that it does. So if you don't have Starnet installed and you came up and you tried to run the script, you'll be presented with an error message telling you that the command line tool of Starnet was not found or it was not configured. So once Starnet is installed and you were to try to run the script without loading an image, that's one of the other checks that it does. So again, if I come up and I run star reduction without an image open, it's gonna tell you that you need to open a fits image before running star reduction. So before we run the fits image, I'm actually gonna open up a JPEG image. The script only supports fits format. So if I decided that I wanted to open up a JPEG image, and then run the script again. It's going to tell me that the image open is a JPEG and is not supported. Please open a fits image and run the script again. So that's what we're going to do now. I'll open up a fits image, but what I want you guys to pay attention to first of all is my current working directory. You can see up top here, it's in my D drive under sessions, redcat 51 M31 RGB HA. I'm pointing that out because the script will change your working directory for you based on the location of the fits file that you open. So for me, if I came over here and I clicked on open and I have a folder called test images just for this video, and there's the file that I'm going to be working with. You can see my path is sessions, test images. So keep that in mind, double click to open it. And now if I come up and I run the script, pay attention to the working directory up top here, you can see it just changed to sessions, test images. So again, wherever your image lives in your file system, it'll pull that path and set it as your working directory. And it does that because the script will generate some files for you and putting them in the same directory that your original image is in just makes it easier for you to be able to find everything. So you don't have to worry about your working directory. It will be set automatically for you. So before we get into actually using the script, there's a couple more things you need to be aware of. The first one is shown right here in the interface, just to remind you, your image must be stretched first. If you run this against a linear image, something that you have not stretched, it will run but your results are not going to be anywhere close to what you're expecting. So make sure you're stretched. The second thing is make sure after you stretch that you've saved your image. If you stretch the image and then tried to run the script without saving, you're effectively still running it against linear data. So keep it simple. Make sure your image is stretched. And make sure you clicked your save button after you did that stretch. This image that I have opened up, I've already previously stretched. And because I just opened it up, it's obvious I've already saved it. So we're ready to go now. We'll talk about the overwrite output file here in a few minutes, but right now you're just gonna play with the slider. I have a default at 0.2, 0 
The smaller the number, the stronger the star reduction. Basically, the smaller the number, the smaller the stars are going to get for you. So I'm going to start on point two, and I'm just going to click apply. If you look over in the console, you can see Starnet is running to create our starless image that is needed for the process. Starnet will only run the first time that you run the script and click apply. Each time you make an adjustment with your slider and click apply again, just trying to get the image to look the way that you want it to look. Each of those subsequent processes will run a lot faster for you because again, Starnet does not need to run each and every time that you click apply just this first time. So we'll let that finish and then I'll show you what I'm talking about with subsequent runs once it's finished. Okay, Starnet is just about done. Once it's complete, we'll see the image and the screen change. And there is our new image with the stars reduced at a 0.2 value. You can see the image up in the top right corner has been named the same as your original image, just suffixed with reduced stars. If we were to go into the working directory, you are, you'll see the same thing in here. So there's our original image. There's the image with the reduced stars that it just generated for us. And there is our starless file. This starless file is what the script is going to look for the next time that we run this. And when it sees it, it's going to know that it does not have to run Starnet again. So what that means is, like I was saying, if I decided point two just wasn't enough, I can take this slider down, for example, to point one, click apply, and just within a few seconds, there's our image with the stars even smaller than the previous. We can keep on going down even lower if we wanted to. So 0 0.03, stars are even smaller. If you went too far and you want to bring them back up, not a problem, just start sliding it the other way. You can go in the opposite direction as well. If you were to go to 0.5 and hit apply, this is what your image looked like when you first opened it up. 0.5 has no effect at all. If you keep going past 0 0.5, the stars will actually get larger. So I was on the fence about leaving that in there. Didn't know if it would be, if anybody would really need it. But I started thinking, well, I know sometimes when I'm finished with an image and I get up and I walk away and I come back 20, 30 minutes later, it doesn't look as good as I thought it did when I was sitting there the first time. So maybe somebody thinks that the stars look good and they come back and they're like, oh, I wish they were just a little bit bigger. You can do that with this script. So it's called star reduction, but you can also go the opposite direction too. Um, all the way up to point 99. And you can see the stars are a lot bigger than they were originally. Um, all the way down to zero. Now zero... Depending on your data, more than likely, you're not going to ever want to run zero. You may end up with just a starless image. In this case, I've got a mess, right? It needs at least for this data to be 0 0.01. If I run it with 0 0.01, you can see at least I got, you know, some tiny stars in place. But I just wanted to leave the whole range in there because everybody's data is different, right? Somebody out there may find that useful to go all the way down closer to zero and all the way up closer to one. So... Again, what's happening in the background, every time I hit apply, my reduced stars file right here is being overwritten. If you want to have multiple copies, because maybe you want to do side-by-side -side comparisons, save them off as JPEGs and look at them in Photoshop, what have you, that's what this option is for. So if I uncheck overwrite output file, and then I'm on point two five right now for my value. If I click apply, instead of it overwriting the reduced stars file, it'll create another one named the same, but it'll suffix that one with the value that you had in the slider. And again, I can do this as many times as I want. Each and every time, it's going to create a brand new file for me. I'm going to do 0.6 and we'll get a 0.6 over here next. So pretty straightforward. And then again, you know, if I ticked overwrite and I ran it again, it's going to go back to overwriting just the reduced stars one. Like I mentioned before, it will not run Starnet every time you click apply because it sees this starless file. If you were to delete that, then it will run Starnet next time you click apply. So just be aware of that. Uh, the other nice thing about just leaving Starless alone until you're absolutely positively sure that you're done with, with your image is I can close the script and I can open it back up with my original image the next day even and start over as long as the starless file is there it will not run starnet again just like i showed you previously so let's talk about that so you can see up here i have a reduced stars file the last one that we ran loaded into serial if i was to come up and run the script again it's going to see that it already reduced stars on this image and it's going to tell you hey this has already had star reduction applied you want to open up an image that hasn't had star reduction applied yet because it's just, it wouldn't be a good thing to start with something that you've already reduced, whether you went lower or higher with that value. So if you come back and you would need to run it again after you closed it, 
just come up and open your original image again, then run the script. And now you're back to where you were before we can play with the value as much as we want. Starnet doesn't run because the starless file is still there. And one last thing before we wrap it up is the help button down here. Everything that we just talked about is summarized in this help page. So if you need a little reminder, come back in here. Hopefully this will answer all your questions. If not, leave me a comment and I'll do my best to help you guys out. Again, once you're done with everything, we'll close the script. If you're happy and you want to do cleanup in your working directory, you can at this point now delete your starless file. If you ran multiple iterations, decide which ones you want to keep. Some, all, none, it's up to you. That's your original file. Nothing has been changed to that, so you don't have to worry about changes to your original image happening. It just uses that to make the starless, and then it builds all of our reduced stars files from that image combined along with the starless image. So I hope for those of you that have been using my old script, find this one a lot easier to use. And for those of you who are just now seeing it, hope you find it useful as well. Had a lot of fun putting it together. I'm hoping to put some more scripts using Python together for you guys as well. Like I said, I'm just learning it. So it's going to be a slow process for me. Before we go, I just want to say thanks to all my members here on YouTube and on buymeacoffee.com. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thanks everyone who watches my videos, likes, comments, and shares. I very much appreciate it all. So that's a wrap for this video. We'll see you on the next one in clear skies.